the first model of the ID series was unveiled at the Paris Motor Show back in 2016, with Volkswagen borderline promising that it would be as revolutionary and iconic as the Beetle was in 1945. Now, for some reason, the front end here really reminds me of a Ninja Turtle where these LED headlights combined with the daytime running lights create a superhero-like face to the front here. And I also really enjoy how this strip goes across the VW badge, giving the entire front of the car a really dynamic look. On the ID3 side, you'll find this prominent crease that runs all the way towards the back, and you also get side skirts to give it a somewhat sporty look. And to be fair, I do like the shape of the vehicle. As standard, these won't be virtual, but they are heated and automatically foldy, and they come with integrated indicators. This lovely two-tone color scheme extends all the way towards the back, which though quite simple, it is quite pleasing to look at and very clean. And I do like the design of these rear LED taillights. So as you can see, the ID Freeze boot here has a really nice square shape to it, which when combined with this lowish loading lip, it makes it super easy to fit in a baby buggy. If you're planning to go to IKEA and need to extend that boot capacity, you can easily do so by folding these seats in a 60-40 arrangement. And around the cabin, you'll find some anchor points. There's also a 12 volt socket and a few hooks lying around. And underneath the boot floor, you do have some additional storage, but I would save that for your charging cables. My next question for you is, since you've had it for a while, have you ever charged it at a petrol station? I've never had to charge it at a petrol station. Um, I've only once had to charge it outside of home. And that was when we did like a long distance trip. At first, I was like, yeah, really need to plan for this, really worried about it. Um, but actually, it goes a lot further than you think. You, you don't necessarily drive your petrol car and plan every petrol station you're going to stop at. Um, and you don't really need to do that with your electric car unless you're going a really long distance or going to the middle of nowhere. So that was going to be my, my next question was, do you find yourself planning ahead of where you go, where do you need to stop? Because I feel like when we discuss electric cars and again, the range anxiety and stuff, people seem to think that you need to be over planning for everything and everywhere you go. Do you find that to be the case? You almost have to be aware of your, your how much charge you've got because it's like some days we might spontaneously want to go out of a weekend. And if I haven't charged the car and I've only got like 67 miles, but I'm going to be doing 80, 90 miles because we're going further afield, we then can't do that. We have to almost plan to do that and make sure that we've charged the car. So actually you managing to, to get a full week out of the car before you need to charge it again? I'm using the car every day and I only have to charge it just around the town sort of thing. Um, and probably one longer distance journey a week and I only have to charge it once a week unless I'm doing something out of the ordinary um, but with my normal routine I don't have to charge it that often. How did you find the whole home charging installation, pricing, how was that? Well we were really lucky because we did it when there was a grant available and um, we sort of got in just before that ended. Um, but it was a really easy process. We contacted the provider and I actually think we did it through our, um, our electric company. And um, they just came around, they fitted the charger. It, it, there was no trouble at all. Just literally just popped it in, connected it up to the mains and we were good to go. Currently in April 2023, there are two battery options you can choose from. The first one is the Pro Performance battery, and that will give you around 260 miles of range. Or if you need a bit more range, you can opt for the Pro S version, and that will give you around 330 miles of range, which is roughly around the same of what I can get on my One Series with a full tank. But as we've been discussing, it is a lot cheaper. And do you find yourself sticking to one mode at the time, or do you change according to the situation you're in? So if we're running a on battery, then we tend to stick it in eco. Um, or if we're going like a longer distance and we want to preserve a bit of that battery, we will look into eco mode. Um, however, usually it's just on comfort and we keep it pretty much on comfort all the time. There is something though that I'm still not sure of and that's partially to do with mode selection. So if you want to change between your D and B modes, you do it by the toggle over there. Yeah. However, if you want to change between eco, comfort and sport, it's by the touchscreen. Yeah. Right. And on top of that, 
like what we did earlier, the aircon is also on the touchscreen, all these touch sensitive buttons. Now, I don't like them, but you've had them for, uh, what, five, six months now? Yeah. How are you finding that? They're not that easy to use um, because you're trying to drive, you have to take one hand off the wheel, then you're trying to navigate with one hand and you're then trying to see what you're trying to press over here. Um, and that can be a bit of a challenge because you end up pressing the wrong thing because it's very, it is sensitive. Um, so that is a bit of a challenge. Um, and also I don't like that the, like the max um, air power here is right behind the steering wheel. So it's actually really difficult to get to. It's not a straightforward, just press a button. You're having to go, wow, your steering wheel and indicates to, to get there. Um, so it's not my favorite thing about the car. I think it'd be much better if there were buttons. Um, it would just be so much easier to use and you could then concentrate on the road ahead. Yeah, to run everything up, do you think you made a good decision in going with the ID3? Do you feel like you'll be going to petrol at some time soon or you're finding it to be everything that you needed? I think all round, it, it's, it's a great car. It's um, spacious, it has plenty of room. You can easily fit two car seats in the back. Um, I've had absolutely no problems with having to charge. So that's not really a concern of mine. I wouldn't write off having a petrol car in the future, maybe for a longer distance journey or something like that. But at the moment, I'm really happy with the ID3. The first thing you will notice as soon as you hop in the ID3 front cabin here is how clean and spacious the ID3's front cabin actually feels. When it comes to material variety, unfortunately, at this price point, there are other vehicles out there that do a better job, but you still get your hard, robust plastics, you get your soft touch materials on the doors and top of the dash here. And to give it that upmarket feel, you also get your gloss black materials on the steering wheel and infotainment display. I must say that the seats in the ID3 are extremely comfortable. I mean, they're soft and plushy, but you also get enough back support for those longish journeys. Behind the steering wheel though, you get this lovely five inch digital cockpit. And to be honest with you, it's one of my favorite ones so far, because unlike your conventional cluster there, you only get three or four widgets that you can slide through via the touch sensitive slider here, which means that you can prioritize what you want to see when you want to see it. As standard with all trims, you get this lovely 10 inch infotainment display that comes with the AV radio, Bluetooth, navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Things that I like about it, I like the size of it, I like the fact that it's quite sharp and the icons are nice and large and there's little to no delay whilst navigating it. But to navigate it, there's no precise way to do so. The only ways you can navigate this is either by touch, gestures or voice control. Hey ID which though quite responsive, it's not the most ideal way to control a screen whilst you're on a go. When it comes to storage bits at the front here, you're actually quite well catered for because you get this netted compartment there, you get a couple of cup holders which are perfect for these small flasks. Over here, you have this cubby here, which also has this adjustable flap here, so you can throw in your keys in there and your smartphone at the back, and this also doubles as a wireless charger. And at the back here, you get a massive compartment with two USB-C ports there, which is perfect to store other bits and bobs that you might have lying around. Compromising on 50-ish litres of boot space means that your rear passengers will have as much space at the rear here as they would have in a saloon-shaped car. But because it's not a saloon-shaped car, you still have plenty of headroom. So at six foot, I'm still about two or three inches off the top of the roof lighting there. And that's despite the luxury of a sunroof. Leg room is not too bad either, and that's despite setting the front seat quite far back. So you get a couple of seat pockets, perfect for your chewing gum and smartphone. You get another big one down here, perfect for a magazine or a tablet. Door bins are massive, so you can fit in a two liter bottle of water. You also get a couple of USB-C ports down here to charge your smartphones and gadgets. And if you fold this bit down, you are rewarded with another couple of cup holders and you get ah, a ski latch. So going back to what I was saying about the ID3's interior here is that 15 years ago, my idea of a futuristic car was something that was going to be very sharp, metallic, robotic feeling. And I'm really glad that that isn't the case 
with this VW because everything in here feels very spacious, organic, the cabin is very inviting, but above it all, it's extremely comfortable. But with that said, I think VW did an excellent job at creating this first EV for the masses. If it's going to become an icon like the Golf and Beetle have, I'm not too sure about. But what I'm sure of is that this is probably one of the best value for money EVs you can purchase right now. And if you're looking into doing that, then why not giving us a call on 01903 538 835 and our vehicle specialist will be more than happy to go through everything for you, including delivery to your front door. But that's all from me today. If you found this review helpful in any way, then do give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the content we produce here at OSV, then do consider subscribing to our channel and help us reach our goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And once subscribed, don't forget to click on a notification bell to be notified when our next video goes live. But that's all from me. Take care and safe driving.